What's up everybody, this is David with AJI Gaming, and in today's video I wanted to play a little bit of Gruel. I know we just came past the holiday season, so red, green, kind of in a lot of people's mind right now. And honestly, what I like to do is kind of pick one card that I really like, and try to either build a deck that it plays well in, or a deck that kind of plays around it. So, for this deck I really wanted to use Skargan Hellkite. I love this card. Honestly, it's not the most competitive card out there. It's why you almost never see it in any other deck. But I figured, you know what, I want to play this card. Gruel is kind of the best way to play this, just because Mono Red usually tries to be a little bit faster than this. So I'm not going to go with Mono Red, I am going to go with Gruel on this one. Also, I tried to incorporate as many of the newer cards as I could, but honestly, Ravnica Allegiance just had some pretty decent Gruel cards. So we're going to go back to a couple of those as well. But starting off at the top, Edgewall Innkeeper just kind of gives us some kind of card draw. So that's one thing Gruul doesn't have that great, so usually you're just trying to beat down your opponent as quickly as possible. And one thing with this kind of deck is you pretty much want to win somewhere between turns 5 and 8. If the game goes on much longer than that, usually your opponent just has a better board state than you and they can just kind of beat you out over time. So Gruul is definitely one of those ones you're trying to be a little more aggressive. But with that being said, trying to be aggressive, playing a lot of cheaper things, you throw down your cards very very quickly. So we do need some way of trying to refill the hand a little bit. So the innkeeper is how we're going to do that. Up next is going to be the Rimrock Knight. Now, the one part of this is nice, the instant that gives you plus two plus O. Oh. Obviously very, very nice in some kind of aggro decks. I'm actually not a huge fan of 3-1 for two mana. And obviously the blocking part, who really cares, I'm not going to use it for blocking. But there's so many people running cheap creatures right now that this guy gets blocked out really, really easily. So I'm not 100% sold on him, but he does draw us a card off the innkeeper. And he's relatively cheap for 3 damage, so I left him in there for now. Up next, Domri's Ambush. You guys know me, I love to play green, I love to have those fight effects. So, very very nice to have this in a Gruul deck. Relatively cheap, just one of each color. So a little bit diff more difficult to cast than something like Rabbit Bite. But we do get the plus one plus one counter on this. Which, obviously if we're trying to kill them as quickly as possible, that extra little counter really helps. Also, something that I've shown before would be a card like Out Muscle. It just costs too much, it's a little bit too slow in this kind of deck, where I'm not going to have an extra, you know, 20, 30 mana like I would have running Nissa in that mono green deck. Up next, we just have the old Goblin. So, 2-2 two, two with Riot. I mean, this guy, obviously, most of the time you're just trying to throw him down with haste as long as the board's clear. I can put the plus one, plus one counter on him if I can't swing in that first turn. But just kind of a good creature here. Something you're going to see a lot in Gruul. I wish it had Trample. But that might be a little too overpowered for two mana. Up next, Bone Crusher Giant. So again, a two-sided card here. The second side we don't really see that much, so obviously I can put it down as a 4-3. The ability there you don't really see it kind of triggered that often. But the instant part of it, very nice, works kind of like a two-cost uh, shock. So it is a little bit nice to have that as well. It does help us get rid of some of the smaller creatures. They're going to block out a Rimrock Knight as well. So I do use the Bone Crusher Giant a little bit. But again, we're basically just getting a 4-3 dumb creature here that's going to let us draw cards off the innkeeper too. Up next is the Lovestruck Beast. Now, this one's kind of interesting because a 5-5 for 3 mana is pretty good. The 1-1 requirement isn't that hard because obviously we have the innkeeper and we have the one that this creates. Again, no trample or anything like that. But this is one I kind of target a lot with Domri's Ambush to kind of take them over. Plus, Domri's Ambush works even if I don't have a 1-1 creature. So if they go ahead and they shock my 1-1 one, one creature, I don't have anything there. I can still use something like Domi's Ambush to take out their biggest threat. So another card that it's okay. I mean, it's a really, really good card. But for what I'm trying to do, where we're trying to just trample them, basically. No trample makes it not exactly the best card. But the size here really does help out. Up next is the card that I've gone back and forth on. So I'm using Grum Goalie right now. Which basically, whenever anything else here comes in, other than the 1-1 token, which I want to come in as a 1-1, but everything else in this deck comes into the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So I really thought about putting in Rhythm of the Wild here instead, because they're the same uh, casting cost. And this also helps us against Simic Flash and Blue decks, where our creatures can't be countered. Also, it does give everything right, except for that token that, again, I want it to come in as a 1-1 anyway. But... The thing is, we're trying to be aggro, we're trying to attack a lot. I feel like Rhythm of the Wild slows your deck down just that little bit, where Grum Goal is going to come in, it's a creature, so I do have some kind of impact there as well. I can actually attack with this, as opposed to an enchantment, which I really can't. So I was back and forth between the two of these. I think Grum Goalie actually works slightly better, 
plus there's enough things in my deck that already have Riot, so I can use this to get the plus one, plus one counter, and then use the creature card's Riot to give them haste. So I'm kind of getting both benefits anyway, just I get the extra creature here to block and attack with, which just for the speed of the deck, we do want to be killing people relatively quickly. I feel like this works slightly better than Rhythm of the Wild. Up next is just going to be the Spellbreaker. I mean, 3-3 three, three for 3, Riot Trample. This guy's great, especially if you already have Grum Goalie down. Also another one that I kind of try to target with Domer's Ambush a lot, just because I want to get him bigger because he's one of the few creatures I have that actually have Trample. That's one thing. I wish this deck had a little bit more Trample. Unfortunately, it doesn't. Up next is going to be the Questing Beast. Obviously, Death Touch, Haste, kind of the two big ones on here. Again, he'll come in as a 5-5 five, five off Grum Goalie if I get him out there first. But the Questing Beast is really nice. Because Death Touch is something great if I am getting kind of in one of those situations where they have a lot bigger creatures than me. I can always just use the Questing Beast and take them out that way. Also, it helps me deal with some of the annoying Planeswalkers out there. So, I'm still having a little bit of problems with Nicol Bolas in a couple of decks. So, Questing Beast obviously a nice way to kind of deal with uh, Nicol Bolas a little bit. Also, people running Nyssa, Narset's still out there relatively often. So, just kind of an overall decent creature for this kind of deck. Up next is going to be the Skargon Hellkite. Kind of the reason why I wanted to play this deck, just because I wanted to bring him back out. Again, don't see enough people playing him. That little ability there, when he comes in with Riot, he gets the plus one, plus one counter. Which again, I can use his Riot to give him haste, Grum Goalie to give him the plus one, plus one, doesn't really matter. But you can deal two damage, divide it up any way you want to, among one or two other creatures, or one or two other targets. So I can hit Planeswalkers, I can hit creatures, I can just hit the opponent to face. It's a nice way to get rid of a late innkeeper or something like that, or even a Rimrock Knight which only has one toughness. So it's a nice way to kind of clear out their board, and then obviously with flying, 5-5 five is relatively big. So it's a nice way to kind of go over the top. With this card, I almost never play it as a 4-4. Even if I want to give it haste and I don't have Grum Goalie down, I almost basically have to put the plus one, plus one on him, because we're trying to get the ability off from it. Up next is going to be Ember Cleave. Ember Cleave is obviously one of the best cards in Standard right now. The nice part for us is we're trying to go a little bit wide with this deck. So it actually makes the casting cost on this go down. And also, it's one of the few ways I can give creatures in this deck trample, but it also gives them double strike. So if I put something like this on, say, the Questing Beast, that's pretty much good game because it's already a large creature, now has double strike, also has trample, and then obviously just kind of wrecks their Planeswalkers. So very, very cool combination. I've never used Embercleave before. I've lost to it plenty of times, so it's nice to finally plug it into deck. And then down at the bottom, just a couple of one-ofs. So, Thorn Mammoth absolutely won me some games. It's kind of expensive for this deck, which is why I'm only running one of them. But if this game does go to the, like, kind of the long stretch here, hopefully I have Grum Goalie out, I can make him a 7-7. And then when I drop a late Rimrock Knight, or I drop a late Innkeeper, he fights anything out there. So it's a nice way to kind of clear their board a little bit. Again, a little bit too expensive to normally play in this deck. That's why I'm only running one of them. Also, Great Henge, same thing. I can make it cheaper. It's a little bit nice because it's the only way to really gain life in this deck, other than one other tap land. But other than that, Great Henge, great card. Just again, a little too expensive for what we're trying to do here. When we get down to the lands, pretty simple. Nine mountains, eight forest. And then when we get to the tap lands, this is one of the parts I kind of struggled a little bit. Just because this is a deck I'm trying to be aggressive with. So coming in tapped is actually kind of a pretty big penalty. So I only went with two of the Rugged Highlands. Again, just one other way to gain a little bit of life if I need it. Also, the Stomping Grounds. Sometimes I shock them in, not too often. And then two Fabled Passages to grab me a land if I don't have the color I need. I tried to go with four of on either one of these. Rugged Highlands, it just slowed my deck down too much. Where I'd run into a situation where I had two of them at the start of the game and I just couldn't play out what I wanted to. Stomping Ground. Again, not enough ways to gain life. Also playing a little bit aggro here. You just get into situations where you're losing life way too quickly, so you can't afford to play the shock. That's why I went mostly basic in this deck. But with that being said, let's jump in and see if we can get a game or two in. Let's try round number three here. I'm probably not even going to post either one of those first two games. I'm playing in the regular playlist because I'm trying to stay away from people playing Cauldron Familiar, which everybody's seen a million times. It's not fun anymore. Cavalcade, which everybody's seen. It's not fun anymore. And I'm trying to stay away from Simic Flash. But unfortunately, even in the standard playlist today, those are the only decks I'm going up against, apparently. So we'll try it one more time here. Opening up, we have every color we could ever want, as well as Fabled Passage to grab us another green if we need it. We have Ember Cleave in hand. We've got the Goblin ready to go here. We've got Grum Goalie ready to go. So not a bad opening hand. Usually you want to play this on their side, but it doesn't really matter, to be honest. 
I don't have anything to play. They're not going to be able to counter me just bringing out a green mana, so not that big of a deal. Chances are, if they got blue, they're probably playing black and have thought erasure anyway, so who cares? Nope, it's Simic. So, once again, came here to kind of try to avoid this stuff, and here comes a counter spell because we are playing Simic Flash. So, I tried to. I tried to avoid it. The first game I got the Cauldron Familiar. The second game I went up against Cavalcade. The third game I'm getting Simic Flash. So, I'm trying to get you guys games where it's not the same boring three decks, but... Here we go. Let's enjoy playing that same boring three decks. This is obviously going to get countered as well. At least he doesn't have a creature to be putting these plus one plus ones on. But we're going to hit every single counter in his deck. And now unfortunately we only have lands and Embercleave. So let's go ahead and play the Rimrock Knight. Let that get countered. He might have like Frilled Mystic at this point. And there's the Frilled Mystic. See this is the problem with this deck. It's so obvious what's going to happen just because, unfortunately, they always draw counter spells because their whole deck is just counter spells. And then they're slowly going to beat you down with Field Mystic. They're going to bring out something on my turn. Like, so if they don't have a counter spell for once, they're going to have the Night Pack Ambusher. And then, obviously, on their turn, they don't do anything. So on their turn, they just get the 3 3 wolf creature every single time. So, again, we're not drawing very well, but we're also playing against a deck that's just super boring and super annoying. This is kind of one of those reasons why I don't like blue. Don't get me wrong, I think the game needs a color like blue. I think it's absolutely necessary in the game because it keeps things balanced. But I think it's extremely boring to play against. And honestly, I think it's extremely boring to actually play that too. Because you don't do anything other than beating people down with like, I'm going to die to this hitting me for three, then three, then three. And he quit which I don't get at all. So honestly, he, he had that one probably. Obviously he didn't know I only had land in hand, but there's somebody with Simic Flash quitting out a game they shouldn't have won. So you know what? I hate Simic Flash. I was trying to avoid it, but I'm gonna put that game in the video just because I hate Simic Flash. And there, we beat Simic Flash. All right, let's try to get a good game. So this is kind of annoying that this is the way this is going because I played a deck similar to this. I kind of play tested this one a little bit. And I had two other decks I was kind of rotating through all throughout kind of the last two weeks here when I took a little bit of a break. So I was trying to find a bunch of decks that were fun to play here. And the entire break, I was not getting games like this where I was just playing against Super Round Meta stuff. I was actually getting a lot of very, very good matchups. So unfortunately, not the case right now. But that's fine. We're going to make it through this. And hopefully we get a couple good matchups. So double Embercleave. We're just going to throw one of those in the bin because it's a legendary artifact. I can only play one anyway. So our turn one, obviously the innkeeper. Best draw for us right now, honestly, is probably something like the Rimrock Knight. Play that out as a 3-1. Eh, we didn't get it. But I was say, play that as a 3-1, get a card draw, and then hopefully get a land off from it. But we got a land, so we did probably the second best thing we could. We're looking at Boro so far. So, hey, I respect it. We're playing against something that's not one of the on-meta decks. I love Boro, so that's another one I'll probably make a deck of relatively soon. Just because there's a lot of fun things you can do there. As long as you're not playing Feather, I think you're kind of a cool dude. Oh, we got black. So we're going to get Knights in on this. The Clarion's just going to take us all out. I might as well play my tap land just because I have nothing else I can do this turn. But now we're back to kind of drawing dry. So this is kind of the problem when you're running a deck like Gruul. Is basically... There's going to be a lot of times where if you don't draw a creature, there's pretty much nothing you can really do. So now we have Embercleave open. Chances are, yep. So Revenger Ravens, then he gets the 1-1 servo. So obviously on his side, he's thinking I'll just block out the Rimrock Knight. So what we're going to do, let's just go face on this one. I don't really care about Saheeli, especially if I get Embercleave up. Because it's going to do one damage to me, he's going to gain a life. Obviously he just thinks he blocks out here. We go ahead and give that Trample a double strike. So we're going to get a decent amount of damage in here. And then, hopefully he doesn't have another Deafening Clarion or something like that, because then I pretty much have nothing. So he doesn't play anything there. It's kind of questionable. We'll go ahead and go for the attack now before I do anything else. Just because I don't want to spend my mana on other things. So there's Revenge of Ravens. He's got a shock or something like that even would take us out. Okay. It's going to take me out that way. Not that big of a deal. 
Now we can go with the innkeeper. And now with the innkeeper, I don't care if he kind of gets beat up a little bit. So what we're going to do is Domri's Ambush. Just give him the plus one, plus one counter on it. Obviously, next turn we give him Ember Cleave. That represents lethal again, even though I don't think we'll get it. But at least we're kind of representing lethal every single turn right now. Out comes a good old Chandra. I'm wondering if there's actually Cavalcade in this deck. Just because this one can make the 2 one, one elementals. He's got the 1-1s one coming off from this. So I'm kind of wondering if that's what he's going for. Like kind of a weird version of Cavalcade and then trying to beat you up with Revenge of Ravens. That'd be interesting. Not something I've seen before. So we'll go with the card draw here off from the Lovestruck Beast. Obviously no attacks from us just because I don't want to take the damage from Revenge from Ravens. And I don't want to give him the life. So now the hope is that I don't lose my little human creature here. Put Ember Cleave on Lovestruck Beast. Go to face. That would be lethal right now. He already used the Murderous Rider, so as long as he doesn't have another one in deck, that should be fine. Or another one in hand. I'm sure he has three more in his deck. And Kaya's Wrath, so we lose everything. Luckily, that does kill the servo he just put out as well. But we're kind of back to square one here. There's another Ember Cleave, which... Okay. I could do two damage to any target. It's not really going to do me any good on either one of these, honestly. So, I think... Well, I guess we might as well do two to face with it. And then bring him out this way. So it didn't make sense to attack either one of his Planeswalkers. But as long as we can keep getting a creature that we could potentially put Ember Cleave on, we'll be fine. Really, we'd need like one more land and then something... If we get like one more land and then we get something like the Spellbreaker, obviously we give him haste, put Ember Cleave on. That would be great. I don't get that. So sacrifice two creatures would have got rid of Bone Crusher, would have got rid of his servo, which isn't that big of a deal. But obviously he's tapped out now. I'm gonna just put Ember Cleave on the Bone Crusher, and that's gonna give him trample. So I'm not sure what the play was there. But as long as I'm not calculating something wrong in my head, this should be good game. We go to face with this. Put Ember Cleave on. Oh! Well. Good thing I have another Ember Cleave in hand because I just messed up. You have to attach Ember Cleave beforehand. So we want to keep the new one and then obviously attach it. I should have equipped that before, but it doesn't matter if he blocks out. This still gives me double strike. That should be good game. Yeah, okay. So silly mistake by me. Silly mistake by him as well because that was first strike damage. There's regular damage it kills. So, it was stupid by me. Luckily, I had a second Ember Cleave in hand, but not quite sure what he was doing there. He had plenty of things to kind of beat us up with. Just kind of a misplay on his side, I think. All right, Gruel. Let's see if we can get one more good matchup here. So, obviously, that last one, we kind of did what our deck wanted to in a little bit. Like, we didn't go super, super wide. He just kept wiping out one creature, one creature, one creature. But obviously, Ember Cleave can kind of come in and clean that up a little bit. So, here's going to be kind of what I was explaining before where it's going to slow us down way too much having tap lands. This is why I didn't go with eight of them. I just went with two of each one. Because unfortunately, I don't really have a great play. So I can play Stomping Ground just to play out the 1-1 one, one here. But it's probably not the best play. Just because we're losing health for absolutely no reason without even knowing what they're playing. If they're playing something like Cavalcade, it's just going to kill us way too fast. So I think in this situation, we're just going to play the Rugged Highlands tapped. And then not really have a turn one play. So he's going to go Mulligan, so he'll be down to 6, so that's somewhat decent for us. And he's got Leyline of the Void, so he's already down to 5 in hand. But we're going to go ahead and play the Highlands here. So Leyline of the Void, so if you don't know, the Leylines, basically, if, they would ever, if they're in your opening hand, they just automatically go out into the field, and if a card would be put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, it gets exiled instead. So basically no graveyard interaction for us, which doesn't matter, it's not really what we're going for. But my guess is that they've got some kind of mill or something that's going to put our cards in our graveyard. Because basically that just means that we get milled out and we lose all of our cards and no way to get them back. Robber of Riches. Yep. So when he attacks, he exiles the top card of my library. So kind of what we're expecting to happen here. It's just a love struck beast. Not that big of a deal. Oh, wait, no. What? Did it? It took a mountain. Okay. Yeah, duh. I was gonna say Love Struck Beast. It's because I played the 1-1 there. So I think 
We're actually going to Domri's Ambush, which I know it's funny because that gets rid of the 1-1 one, one here, but I can make a 1-1 one, one elsewhere. So, we'll do that. I mean, he milled, or he Mulligan down to a card, so as long as I keep card advantage here, we should be okay. There's Ashiok, so that's exactly what he's going to do. He's just going to sit here and just try to exile the entire deck. There goes all the rest of our Love Truck Beast, as well as some lands. And I still only have two lands. Well, at least we can do this and take out Ashiok, so... Not the best play for us, but we can take out Ashiok here. And then we can drop this guy down and make the next 1-1. One, one. So now I'm just one mana away from having a couple of Love Struck Beasts I can play. Worst case scenario, I can play the Rimrock Knight next turn. And he's going to pass back to us, so that's fine. I think we go Love Struck Beast. You should go with Gruel Spellbreaker, but honestly, if he's not going to have anything on the field, I'd rather be hitting for 5 than hitting for 3. Conclave, so that's going to take Love Struck Beast. Not that big of a deal. I have another one, and he's just going to take more free damage here from me. Fable Passage, not so bad. It's going to go ahead and fetch us another Red Land. And I think we go Love Struck here. I could have went Grum Goalie, honestly, but again, if Grum Goalie would be attacking for three next turn, Love Struck, as long as it sticks, will attack for five. I'd much rather have that. Another Conclave, so that's fine. I mean, we're still getting three damage in per turn. He's basically just spending his turn Conclaving, so that's cool with us. Now, we can go with Grum Goalie and then play it down Rimrock on the same turn. Go ahead and swing in for our three again, putting him down to ten. Now he has decisions to make, unless he has some kind of board wipe. I mean, just getting rid of one of our creatures at a time is not going to be enough. That's questionable. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we're just going to attack with everything. That way if he wipes, we have the Spellbreaker. Okay. So I'm guessing he just drew that very, very poorly. I'm guessing that that deck actually has something decent to do. I like the idea of it. I get the whole, you know, sending everything and just trying to exile everything. If you're trying to win by mill, it's interesting. I just haven't seen it done with red before. So it'd be interesting what that deck list was. But that was a pretty short game, so let's try to get one more. All right, so we're on a little bit of a run here. Chances are we'll start playing against a little bit better decks now. I'm not sure if that skill-based matchmaking actually works in the regular playlist. I know obviously it definitely does in the ranked part. So I'd be playing against quite a few decent decks that way. I actually did play a little bit of ranked during the last season. So I got up past gold into diamonds. So I believe that puts me back down to gold for this season. So luckily, when I do finally jump back into that, we'll be playing gold. We won't be playing, you know, in the silver tiers against not necessarily the best decks. So at least we'll have a little bit of fun there. But let's see what we can get here in just a standard playlist. Not the worst opening hand. Again, kind of the tap lands, not the best, because it kind of makes it so I don't have a turn one play. Just because I'm not going to pay two life for that. So we'll go ahead and let that enter tapped. Turn two, we can drop an innkeeper and obviously just kind of see what we draw into. Maybe go Rimrock Knight, just so we're kind of playing more efficiently. Yeah, we'll go Rimrock. Just because if he doesn't have something like Unsummon, he might have like an Opt or something. But if he doesn't get a blocker out, getting three damage in, rather than just having an innkeeper just sitting there, is obviously a lot better for us. And it's another guy. Oh, okay, I thought this was the mill one. I thought this was the one that's like, oh, when it comes in, it mills your cards. But it's not. So, okay. Put a little 4-1 flyer up in there. That's fine by me. I'm actually going to play the Lovestruck Beast as a 5-5 now. I know obviously it looks funny because I don't actually have a 1-1 one -one out here. But we have the innkeepers. So I have a way to make a 1-1 one -one and then just start swinging with the Lovestruck Beast next turn. This could be a Murderous Rider, which would take out Love Struck Beast. Very possible, too, just because that card's everywhere right now. Nope, Thought Erasure. That's probably going to be Embercleave. Embercleave, Great Henge, both great cards. Obviously, it's got to be one of the two of them. I imagine it's Embercleave, though. He took Innkeeper. Wow, okay. That's weird because I already had two of them, so like it's not like you're going to slow that down. But, hey, I, I will take that all day. I'm glad he took that out, actually, instead of one of the others. So we'll go ahead and attack with Love Struck Beast. Obviously not going to go to the Rimrock Knight here. If he blocks, cool. If not, whatever, we get 5-2, that's good for us. Because obviously throwing an Ember Cleave on something like that now would be very, very powerful. So next turn, I wouldn't even care. I'd swing in with the Innkeeper just to activate Ember Cleave. And I don't care if he kills it with the Fae of Wishes. There's Murderous Rider. I figured he had it in his hand. 
So now the question becomes, which of these do we play? I think we're going to play Gruul Spellbreaker and just give it the plus one, plus one, so obviously we can get through Fae of Wishes. No attacks here, just because anything I attack with just dies to his Fae of Wishes anyway. Also, that does open Embercleave back up. So again, we'll swing in with everything next turn, assuming nothing dies. Throw Embercleave on whatever we have to to either save it or to do a just a ton more damage to the opponent. So hopefully putting him in a little bit of a tough predicament here. There's the Murderous Rider. Kind of expected that guy to come down. He's going to pay for a land, so he's got something going on. Another Thought Erasure, so there goes Embercleave. There's no way he goes Great Henge here, I don't think. It'd be kind of silly. I mean, Great Henge, the only nice part for us is it kind of fixes our mana problem. So that'd be kind of the only argument for that. But honestly, I think Embercleave is the pretty obvious pick there. No attackers from them. We do get another land, which is nice. Unfortunately, not quite enough of Great Henge yet. Now we'll swing in for four. Leave it open like we have something else that we can do. See how he chooses to kind of block out here. Double blocking wouldn't make sense. Might block the Murderous Rider just to get the life gain from it. But it doesn't matter. We'll get through that. Do one damage to heal too. So we'll end up basically at 12 health. But he'll lose his kind of blocker there. Nope. Switches over to Fave Wishes. So just going to kill that instead. That's fine by me. And then we might as well play the Bone Crusher Giant. Just have something else out there. Also get to draw a card off Innkeeper, which is nice. And then Fable Passage next turn into Great Henge. In comes Gadwick. He only, okay, he played him for two, so only gets to draw two cards off it. Not that bad for us. Go ahead and go Fabled Passage. Use this to grab ourselves a green mana. And then obviously Great Henge comes out. He has no way of uh, blocking it, countering it, anything like that. So nice to get Great Henge out. And then we might as well tap it just for the life gain part of it. Obviously, we're not going to use the mana part, but we can use the life gain part of it at least. Go and attack with all of these just because three damage or at least three power guarantees a kill on either one of them. So he can block out any way he wants to. A little double block there. So he'll lose both of his creatures. I'll actually lose both of mine in this situation if he leaves the blocks there. He doesn't decide he wants to keep Gatwick alive. I don't get why. That would be a silly block. Okay. Fine, he's just going to double block Spellbreaker. That's fine. I'll probably take out Murderous Rider, honestly, just because I don't want him to keep gaining life. Honestly, I think that was probably the better swap the original one he had. But, hey, you do you, man. Maybe he has, like, a board wipe or something. And we're going back to the normal blocking. Okay. Yeah, that one makes a little bit more sense, honestly, for him. Not quite sure what he was thinking about taking out the Spellbreaker. But that also means he probably does not have any kind of board wipe, just because I don't see why he would have done that if he did. So he's definitely got the advantage here in terms of cards in hand. So obviously not sure what he's going to do with that. Yep. Okay, he's milling himself. Interesting. Might be a Jace deck. Maybe just didn't draw the Jace Planeswalker. So, well, that'll stop the Spellbreaker from hitting him in face this turn, because obviously just block out with the 0-4. But this, I'm guessing this is a Jace self-mill deck then, because we got card draw there. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple ways for him to kind of lose cards. Okay, when this comes in, it's going to turn two instants, so that's not bad. So he's going to bring back Adwick and something else. Ah, okay. So he's got a little bit of a cycle going there where he's just going to keep kind of playing the same things over and over. That's fine. We'll just gain our life off from that. Swing in for the four. This would be a great chance to have Embercleave. Unfortunately, we don't. But they'll kill Scholar of Ages. Now, next turn, Gadwick probably comes back down on his end. Drop down the green mana. We'll leave, obviously, the one we can't do anything with. If he plays Gadwick, he actually can't play, unless he drew, drew a land, he can't play Blood for Bones. And the Gadwick would actually, if you want to play both this turn, would actually have to be for zero. So I'm not sure that's necessarily the play here. Nope. He's got a... 4-4 four, four Demon. Flying Death Touch. That's fine. Surveil 2, draw a card. So now Domri's Ambush or Embercleave, kind of our best two draws here. Because either way, it would be a way to kill the uh, Demon here. And of course we don't get it. That's fine. Create a 1-1. One, one. Put out the 5-5. Five, five. So then obviously I don't care if I lose the Spellbreaker here. Because that represents more damage coming in. Gets the plus 1, plus 1. Hey look, Skargan. You know what? We're going to throw out the Skargan here. 
Now I can put haste on him because he'll actually get the plus one, plus one from the Great Henge. So I don't have to worry about it that way. Go ahead and swing in with those two. So that's not bad. Great Henge, another way besides Grum Goalie to put that plus one, plus one on Skargan. This should be hopefully lethal at this point. Obviously, we're not going to kill him this turn. But we're still going to get through here. He does take me out because obviously he has Death Touch. So Skargan, unfortunately, did not really get to do much this matchup. But he'd have to have some kind of board wipe, I think, to kill us at this point. Surveil so 3, return a creature card. So probably just brings back the demon, I would imagine. Because he's not close enough to milling himself out. So he's not going to bring back the merfolk. Agent of Treachery. Okay. So he's going to Agent of Treachery. Has to steal the Spellbreaker here. I... Okay. Well, he might take the Lovestruck Beast, but then the Lovestruck Beast can't do anything. Because it doesn't have a 1-1. One, one. It can block. So I guess it just kind of buys him an extra turn there. So interesting card. Interesting play there for him. I've seen a lot of people doing that, binning the Agent of Treachery just to bring it back. So now we're going to Great Henge. Throw out another 1-1. One, one. Sorry if you can hear my dog playing in the background. He's uh, having a good time out there, apparently. So we're going to draw a card off from this one. Go ahead and play the Goblin here. I think we put Haste on him, just because I think I might actually have Lethal here. He gets plus one, plus one. And then Thorn Mammoth next turn, which would be incredible. So if I swing in this way, that gets blocked out and killed. That gets blocked out, so I don't have Lethal. So we have to wait one more turn. I can drop Thorn Mammoth, make Thorn Mammoth fight the Lovestruck Beast. So... Assuming he doesn't get anything incredible, we might be okay this time. I imagine, yep. So what he's going to do is he's basically going to kill the Agent of Treachery and bring another one back. And then take my other Love Struck Beast. So, interesting little game plan for him. Not that big of a deal because Thorn Mammoth should be able to come in and actually take out one of Love Struck Beast. So I'm actually okay with that. So, a little bit annoying. You see a lot of people with this Agent of Treachery thing where they're binning it, bringing it back. Or things where you can double the end of the battlefield effect. So basically they take you twice. Actually, that's not bad getting the Ember Cleave either. So let's throw down Thorn Mammoth. He's going to get to fight whatever I want him to. I'm actually going to have him... Ah, oh, yep, that was a mistake. I meant to have him fight the Love Struck Beast, but I wasn't sure if I was going to get the plus one, plus one before or after. Doesn't really matter. We'll put the Ambush on. And then go ahead and take out the Demon here. So now if I swing in, I've only got three, so that's not going to be quite enough. I've got to wait one more turn, and then Ember Cleave. Hopefully, he doesn't have a way to take my Thorn Mammoth, because if he does, obviously, he can take advantage of that and start killing my creatures. So we're kind of banking on him not having a way to take my Thorn Mammoth here. Obviously, Blood for Bones, just kill one of the Lovestruck Beasts, bring back... Yeah, that's what he's going to do. He's going to Blood for Bone, kill Lovestruck Beast, bring back Agent of Treachery, take the Thorn Mammoth, have the Thorn Mammoth fight, probably the Spellbreaker. So, yep. Annoying combo there. Pretty smart combination, though, because now he's got Thorn Mammoth. I don't know that he'll actually get the fight effect off in Thorn Mammoth, though, because it actually bounces back to, to him. But it doesn't actually re-enter the battlefield, so he's not getting the battlefield effect there. But now he'll get it. So now he can attack whatever he feels like. Unfortunately, going to be one of my... Proud, yeah, it's going to be my Spellbreaker, just because it's the big guy. So, I want to get something with Haste. Anything with haste is good. Unfortunately, that's not going to be it. So, let's go to face here. Throw him down, because if I attack with everything, unfortunately, I still get blocked out right now. He's saying good game. It's actually not good game yet. Because if I attack with everything, blocked, 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 blocked. I would have to hope he lets something go through and then Ember Cleave, but he's not going to let anything go through. So I think we have to wait yet another turn on this one. Yeah. We got to wait another turn. <laughs> we got to wait yet another turn, and unfortunately, he's just going to play something down and have Thorn Mammoth and start fighting my board state. So the only way we really had a chance to win there is if we got something with haste, because I could have put something with haste out on the battlefield. I would have had five to four. Attack with everything, he blocks out all but one, and then just Ember Cleave, whatever he didn't block. But unfortunately, I think we're going to see Gadwick come down here. Okay, Freya wishes, it's fine. But basically what's going to happen is Thorn Mammoth is going to fight whatever he wants to when he drops Freya wishes back down. 
And then, unfortunately, he has a huge number advantage on me. So Soren, Soren's gonna come in, that's fine. See what he chooses to do here. Because he can't quite, if he attacks with everything, obviously I just let it through and I, I kind of deal with it that way. So that's not what he's gonna do. All right, so he's got a lifelink on that. So that's gonna be a lot of health coming back to him here. I don't have any way of blocking that, so. That's unfortunate, he's gonna go back up to nine. I think we probably lost this. But we'll keep trying. Let's go to face with just one. See if he'll block out with the Thorn Mammoth. Hopefully he does. Probably Love Struck Beast, actually. It's what's going to block here, though. Agent of Treachery would be great, because that actually wouldn't block out enough damage. Ah, he's going to double block. Okay. Well, let's kill this one first. I could move Embercleave now, but there's nothing, eh. Yeah, it doesn't matter where I put it. All right, send it back to him. Unfortunately, he's gonna gain plenty of life now with Soren going that I don't know we're gonna get back into this one. This is kind of what I was talking about where this deck wants to win in the first couple of turns. It doesn't want to go a long game. And unfortunately, I did put something in this in case this goes to the long term, which was something like the Thorn Mammoth, but then he grabbed the Thorn Mammoth, so. Kind of the only thing I put into the game to deal with this, he kind of took over, so. Yep, beat out by my own card because of Agent of Treachery. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. Agent of Treachery, it's kind of an expensive card at 7 mana, but man, I still think it's overpowered. Especially with Recursion and, like I said, ways to make it so you can take two creatures. So, for example, I use them sometimes in like a Brawl deck where you can take their commander. So if you run it in that deck I was playing the other day, you can take their commander and an additional card off from them, and then they pretty much just quit because there's no way for them to get the commander back unless they kill it. I'm never going to block with it or anything. But, yep, now he's blocking. He's going to kill me out with my own Thorn Mammoth. We'll see what I draw next turn, just, you know, in case, but I'm pretty sure this is just going to be a good game. I don't have any, like, huge board wipes that's going to take him out. I don't have any way of dealing with Agent of Treachery, so... Well, I said, you got to win this one quickly. If you don't, we kind of rely on the Thorn Mammoth, and he took our Thorn Mammoth, so good game. I mean, he, he beat me at my own game here. He beat me with the only thing I put in here to kind of deal with this. So, I mean, even a Skargon Hell... Well, Skargon Hellkite, actually, if he attacks here, Skargon Hellkite would be a 5-5. Five, five. And then, yeah, I, I still don't think it'd be enough. So, I think, I mean, we could keep playing this out, but I think we're just going to say good game here and drop out. Because it's not going to be worth us playing another 20 minutes to, to just lose. So, good game, man. That's a very interesting deck. Unfortunately, took out my win con, but that's exactly what your deck was supposed to do. So, good job doing it. So, we'll take one last look here, kind of the deck I was playing. Again, not the most competitive thing, but if you want to play something a little bit different, it is cool that Gruul still does work. Obviously, trying to win somewhere between turns 5 and turn 8. If it goes a little bit longer than that, and then they take your Thorn Mammoth, there's no way you're going to win. But something like Questing Beast could have been fun there towards the end. Throw an Embercleave on him. Never really got to see that combination happen. Skargon Hellkite with Embercleave is nice. Thorn Mammoth with Embercleave is just hilarious because it already has Trample. But that would make it a 7-7, seven, seven, probably an 8-8 eight, eight with Great Henge. Even potentially a 9-9 nine, nine with a Spellbreaker. So a lot of cool things that could happen. Unfortunately, they didn't in this game. But that's the deck I was playing. If you guys want to play it out, it's a lot of fun in normal playlist. I just wouldn't recommend playing it in ranked. Anything above gold, I think up into gold, as long as you're a somewhat decent player, I think you'll be fine. I think once you get into diamond and stuff, there's just simply better decks out there.